Hello, this is Ken Ferry with this week's Boots in the Field. This week I want to talk about fertilizer uh, that we applied to the wheat this spring. We're seeing in some situations where we have fertilizer burn in the sprayer tracks, mainly the sprayer tracks only in some fields. And getting a number of calls about that. And it's, it's not in every field. Uh, it's not in every soil type. It's not on every day that we applied the nitrogen. And for the most part, it's only in the wheel tracks. I've seen this before. It usually comes uh, or shows up in conditions like we've had this year. The wheat is coming out of dormancy. It's time to get the nitrogen on. But then we get rain uh, that holds us out of the field. It's too wet to, to make the application. So if we try to push that application, of course, it can lead to ruts in the field. And then we get a break in the weather, just like we did this year, where we get at least frozen mornings that we can get out in that wet soil and uh, keep the machine from cutting in. So typically we, you know, like a lot of wheat that got top dust this year, it was early morning hours. So we'd come on there when we still had enough frost to hold the machine up and run as late as we could in the day before we started to uh, lose that frost cover. When we get into those conditions, the question then becomes, what applicator do we use? Is the ground firm enough uh, to be running a row gator? And that would reduce the area of the track if we can run out there with the, with the smaller tired machine. Or, like in cases this year, will the row gator fall through? We didn't have that much frost or freeze there at the surface. And in some cases, trying to bring a, a wheeled machine out there, in this case a row gator, we could possibly fall through and cut ruts or in worst case scenarios, I know in one field where the guys got stuck. So now we're tearing up things in a, in a big way. So in most cases, uh, we had to resort to flotation, meaning that in this case, we're using the three wheelers. Uh, so we've got a basically 11 foot footprint out there so we could stay above the frost, not cut the ruts and still get this done. Well, if the ground was firm enough, froze enough, it, to hold the weight, it would um, hold the weight and all we had to deal with as far as contact area on the ground were the tire lugs. And you know, when you look in these fields, you, you can't see much evidence of the lug or the lug is pretty shallow out there. If it was uh, not firm enough, of course, um, in that case where if you're out there with a narrow tired machine, you're going to cut a rut, but it is firm enough to hold up a three-wheeled machine but the lugs um, broke through. So we end up with lug marks out in the field that might be anywhere from an inch and a half to two inches deep uh, out there. Those are the cases where we see most of this uh, damage that we're talking about. And what I believe it is based on experience over the past years is it basically when the uh, lugs would break through the frost, but we had enough, the soil was firm enough to hold our machine up it kind of turns that uh, tear gator into a land roller, kind of like what we roll the soybeans with and we show it to you in the meetings. The whole surface of the tire now is coming in contact with the wheat and it's pressing this wheat to the ground. So as we pass through, we do have the wheat basically pressed to the ground and we're making our nitrogen application. But with the wheat all laying down, it's, we're painting that wheat plant from the base of the plant all the way to the top. So instead of just spraying through the field and getting the flag leaf burnt, we are laying the wheat down underneath our tire track and we're, we're catching it with our 28 from the base of the plant all the way up one side of that plant. Add to it, of course, the stress of the wheel track, slowing down the metabolism a little bit. And I believe that's where uh, the burn is coming from and that I've seen it in the past and it seems to repeat itself when we're there. And we still see that burn sometimes um, in the narrower track, especially if we're, if we're cutting in out there. But I, I think the, the application of it and the fact that we're you know, pressing the sweet down, that's, that's where it's coming from. Add again to the stress of, of just being run over, that's gonna slow that wheat down. If the soil was firm enough, of course, and the lug didn't sink in, then we didn't lay that wheat down and we didn't paint it all the way up one side and the amount of burn that we see there is considerably less. And I think that's why in some of our soil types, we didn't see the wheel track burn. Some of the early morning applications when the ground was firmer and kept the machines afloat, 
as well as probably on some of the sandier soils that would tend to freeze harder during the evening hours. The frost gets down in there a little bit tighter, give us a little firmer action there to work with. So it becomes a tough call. Do we fight the ruts or do we risk the burn? I've watched this over the years. And these tracks, they'll be visible in height throughout the growing season. And if we look at it, tillering will be reduced in these wheel tracks. And this wheat will be a little shorter uh, at the end of the season as the heads come out. Doesn't seem to change the head size. Does seem to change the tillering a little bit. And if you know where those streaks are, you'll be able to find them throughout the season. This wheat will be a little bit shorter. Now, trying to document the cost in this has been hard. Uh, you know, we don't have much to compare to. It's hard to find a field where we have burnt wheat in the wheel track and wheat that's not burnt in the wheel track in the same uh, soil type treated on the same day. So while we try to harvest those wheel tracks and see what the cost of that is, it's hard to find another wheel track. So we have even, in this case, even wheel tracks out there, one with and without burnt. Pretty hard to find. And in the past, it's been um, somewhat inconclusive to decide what kind of yield potential loss uh, there would be from that wheel track itself. So at best, as I look at past plots that we've taken out or experiments where we're trying to make this, there might be anywhere from a 0 to a 5% reduction in yield in that track uh, where the sprayer ran that would be uh, there from the burn. So it's kind of a tough call. You know, we made the call to go ahead and guys said, when should we go? And uh, as we looked at it, we said, well, we got to go this week uh, if we can. And at the latest next week, we have to start maybe changing plans. As we look at wheat coming out of dormancy and stuff, if we don't get there early enough, of course, we don't get the tillering we want. And that's a bigger loss. So, and if the wheat gets very big and we can go out there with streamer nozzles and stuff like that, but the bigger the wheat gets, no, definitely the wheel track starts to become an issue. So we may have to switch products or, you know, think about tram lines and tram lines are one way to manage uh, the wheel track issues out there. Uh, you know, a lot of guys aren't set up to do tram lines in their wheat. The bottom line, I guess, is it's really worse than it looks. <clears throat> uh, will there be some yield loss? I think so, but I don't expect it to be big. On a 90-foot boom, we're affecting, if we're running an 11-foot tarragator track, we're affecting, what, about 12% of the area? And I think that 12% might be affected up to maybe as much as 5% based on uh, previous fields that we worked with. So if we think about it on a 90-foot boom, we're going to experience about a 4, 4.5 four bushel loss on 90 bushel wheat on 12 percent of the ground if we take that across the whole boom we're talking about a half a bushel to the acre um, it's going to be hard to even measure uh, that much out there so i hope that helps in the wheat decision the uh, grower forms should have been a link should have been delivered to everybody by email either through us directly or through your retailer and then remember the grower form we're asking you to spend some time uh, click on that link and go in there and fill the information out about your operation uh, so we can do a better job in here writing your fertility recommendations. So that data goes nowhere but in-house, and it helps us to know what uh, programs you're working with, what starters you're working with, and that type of thing. So it's all geared on helping us make you a better recommendation. So before we get busy in the field, if you guys would stop and fill out the uh, grower form report, uh, click on that link that's been sent to you and get that information back to us. It would be a big help, and it's going to help you in the future itself. So with that, hope it helps. Keep her safe. Keep her moving.